Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using if statements in JavaScript. Now, what's cool about if statements is we can use them to help our programs to make decisions. So I can write a series of if statements and they'll basically say like when certain conditions are met, I'll do certain things and when other conditions are met, I'll do other things. So with if statements, our programs can actually respond to things that are happening. So when one thing happens, we can do something and when another thing happens, we can do another thing. So what I wanna do first is just show you guys some examples of if statements that you encounter in the real world. So actually as human beings, we use if statements in our lives all the time. And I wanna show you guys some examples of that so you can wrap your head around what they're doing and then we'll move into the code and we'll start writing some if statements in JavaScript. So I'm just over here on this text file and I've written out some if statements. So here's one up here, it says, I wake up, if I'm hungry, I eat breakfast. So this is actually an if statement. And you'll notice right here, we have this condition. So I'm saying if I'm hungry, and this is a condition, right? This is either true or it's false. If this is true, if I am hungry, then I'm gonna go ahead and eat breakfast. But if I'm not hungry, in other words, if this is false, then I'm just gonna move on. So I'm not gonna do anything. Here's another one, it says, I look at my phone, if it's about to die, I charge it. So again, this is another if statement. We have this condition up here, it says, if it's about to die, and that's either true or it's false. If it's true, then we charge it. If it's false, then we don't do anything and we just move on, right? Here's another if statement down here. It says, I leave my house. If it's cloudy, I bring an umbrella. Otherwise, I bring sunglasses. So this is a little bit different from the ones up here because we have this otherwise word, right? So if this condition's true, in other words, if it is indeed cloudy, then I'm gonna bring my umbrella but otherwise I'm gonna do something else. So here we're basically saying like, if the first condition is false, then we wanna also try to do something else. And in this case, we're just gonna bring sunglasses. So this is a little bit more of a complex if statement, but nonetheless, it's a valid if statement. And finally down here at the bottom, we have this last one. And this is even more complicated. So it says, I'm at a restaurant. If I want meat, I order a steak. Otherwise, if I want pasta, I order spaghetti and meatballs. Otherwise, I order a salad. And so this is an even more complex if statement because we're actually checking two separate conditions. So I'm saying if I want meat, and if that's true, I get the steak. But if that's false, then I go down here and I actually check another condition. So if we want meat, then right away we order the steak and then we're done, right? We're good to go. But if we don't want meat, if this is false, then we're gonna check to see if we want pasta. And so then if I want pasta, I'll order spaghetti and meatballs. But if this is also false, then I'll just order the salad, right? So if I don't want meat or spaghetti, then I'll just get a salad and everything will be good. So this is a little bit more complex of an if statement because not only do we have one condition up here, but if that's false, we're also checking um, another condition. So let's head over to our JavaScript file and we're actually gonna start writing some if statements in JavaScript. So the first thing I wanna do is create a variable. And I'm just gonna create a variable and I'm just gonna call it isMail. And this variable is basically just gonna represent if somebody is a male. So it's gonna be a true or a false value, right? They're either male or they're not. So I'm gonna say isMail is equal to true. Let's say this person is a male. I can actually use an if statement and depending on if this person is a male, I can do something. So I can say if, and I can use these open and close parentheses and then an open and close curly bracket. And inside of these parentheses, I can check a condition. So remember in that text file, we had like, if it's cloudy outside or if I'm hungry, right? We were checking different conditions. Those conditions are gonna go inside of these parentheses. In our case, our condition, we're checking to see if they're a male. So I can say if is male, and basically I'm just checking to see if this Boolean variable has a value of true. And if this variable has a value of true, then I'm gonna be able to execute whatever code is inside of these curly brackets. So I'm just gonna say document.write, and we'll just write out like, you are male. And over here, I can just refresh the page and you'll see it says you are male. 
If I was to come over here to this is male variable and set it equal to false, however, so now is male is equal to false, nothing's going to show up because we're not actually going to execute any of the code that's inside of here because this was false. And when this is false, we just move on. So we just move on to uh, the next line that's outside of this if statement. But let's say that I wanted to do something else when is male was equal to false. So when it's true, we write out you are male. But when it's false, let's say we wanted to write out you are not male. I can use another keyword in JavaScript called else. And this else, any of the code inside of here is going to get executed whenever is male is equal to false. So here we can just type document write, and we'll say you are not male. And when I refresh the page, since is male is equal to false, it's going to say you are not male. So that's kind of cool. And if I was just to set this equal to true now, it'll say you are male. So depending on the value of this is male variable, my program is actually able to tell you different things. So if it's male, it can tell you it's male. If it's not male, it'll tell you that it's not male. And that's basically how our program can respond to different things using if statements. We can also take these if statements to the next level, however. So if I wanted, I could actually create another variable over here. So let's do that. I'll create a variable called is tall. And is tall will basically represent whether or not someone is tall. And we can actually set this equal to true. And let's say inside of this if statement, in addition to checking to see if the person was male, I also wanted to check to see if they were tall. I can use a special operator in JavaScript called the and operator. And I can say is male and, and it's just these two ampersands, and then I can say is tall. So this entire condition is saying if they're male and they're tall, then execute the code that's inside of here. Otherwise, say that you are not male. So we can actually change these strings. So now I can say document.write, and instead of just saying you are male, I can say you are a tall male. So I know for a fact that if is male is true and is tall is true, then they're a tall male. Otherwise, we can say you are either not male or not tall, right? So the way this and works is that both of these conditions have to be true. So is male has to be true and is tall has to be true. If one of those guys isn't true, then we'll execute this else code down here. And actually we could say you are either not male or not tall or both, because it's possible that they will be both. And so since both of these guys are true, when I refresh the page, it's gonna say you are a tall male, which is correct, um, at least for these variables. If I was to change this is tall variable to false, now instead of saying you are a tall male, that's no longer true, so we'll refresh the page and it'll say you are either not male or not tall or both. So just by changing one of these variables, our program was able to respond to it. And if I was to change is male to false as well, then it'll stick with its message because none of this is gonna be true. In addition to checking to see if is male and is tall, I can check to see is male or is tall. So instead of using this and operator, I could use another operator called or. And basically this or operator is gonna check to see if they are male or if they are tall. So unlike with the and operator, both of these guys don't have to be true. Only one of them has to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. So they can be a male and tall, but they could also be male and short, or they could be not male and tall. Um, it doesn't really matter. And so we could actually change the text inside of here. Now, instead of saying you are a tall male, we would have to say you are either male or tall or both. And so down here in this else, we could actually change the text to say, you are not tall and not male. Because the only situation where we're gonna be executing this code is when they're not tall and not male. So I'm gonna refresh the page and you'll see because both of these guys are false, it says you are not tall and not male. But if I was just to set one of these equal to true, so let's set is male equal to true, now it's gonna say you are either male or tall or both. So it's able to recognize the condition. 
So I wanna show you guys how we can make more of these conditions. So here we're checking to see is male or is tall. And actually I wanna change this to is male and is tall. But let's say that we wanted to do something when they were male, but when they were not tall. So if they were like a short male, we wanted to do something. Well, I can use another keyword in JavaScript called else if. And I can just say else if, and I need open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. So I'm gonna click enter. And you can see now I have else if with open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. Inside of this parentheses, we can check another condition. So in the case that this condition up here is false, then we'll come down here and we'll check to see if this condition is true. So we can add in another condition. We could say is male and let's check to see if they're not tall. So here's a good question. How can we check to see if they're not something? In other words, how can we check to see if something is not true? Well, I can use what's called the not operator and it's basically just this exclamation point and I can put this exclamation point between my before my condition and it'll negate that condition. So I can say not is tall and whenever you see this exclamation point, you just wanna say not. So this is basically saying else if is male and not is tall. So in other words, if they're male and they're not tall, then we wanna do something. So down here, we could just write something else. Um, we could say like document.write. And in this case, it'll be you are a short male. And I wanna change this one up here. So this is gonna be you are a tall male. And then in addition to checking to see if they're male and they're not tall, we also wanna check one more condition, which is gonna be if they're not male, but they are tall. So if they're tall, but they're not male. So I'm gonna create another else if. And inside of here, we're gonna to check to see if they're not male. So not is male and is tall. So over here, we could write document.write. You are not male, but you are tall. So here we have a complete if else block is what we would call this. And it's checking all of the possible conditions for these two variables. So we're checking to see if they're male and tall. We're checking to see if they're male and not tall. We're checking to see if they're tall and not male. And otherwise we're just getting for both of them. So actually down here in this else block, we could say you are not tall and not male because we know for a fact that neither of those conditions is true. So let's see if this is gonna work. So right now, we'll just set both of these guys equal to true. So when I refresh the page, it says you are a tall male, perfect. If I set is false equal to, or is tall equal to false, now it's gonna say you are a short male, cool. If I set is false equal to true, or is tall equal to true and is male equal to false, now it's gonna say you are not male, but you are tall. And if I set both of them equal to false, it's gonna say you are not tall and not male. So hopefully that illustrates how you can use these if else statements in order to check different conditions. And these can be really powerful because like I showed you, you know, our program is able to respond to these variables. So depending on the value of those variables, we're able to do certain things. So that's the basics of if statements. I hope you guys learned something. There's also other ways that we can use these if statements. So in addition to using uh, Boolean variables like this, we can also use numbers. We can check to see if different numbers match up or we can check to see if different strings match up. I'm gonna talk about that in the next video. But for now, this has just been a basic introduction into if statements. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.